All right. Um, going to do a video on my, uh, on my four wheeler here. Never really done one on this or anything. I sold my razor last year and, uh, didn't have anything. This guy's shooting out in the background, kind of right here in Northern California. There's a little bit of snow on the ground. Um, so this is a 2022 Polaris Sportsman 570. Um, it's not the like top of the line unlimited or whatever, but it's, you know, camo has power steering. It's four wheel drive, fuel injected, whatever. It is a 570. It's not the big boy, the big 800 or 1000 or anything like that. I didn't, uh, didn't think it was really necessary for my needs, for what I did, for what I wanted. Um, but this, uh, I bought it last fall. I don't know. I've had it six months now. It's probably got 150 miles on it total. Um, just got these tires put on. But I'm going to do a quick overview of the machine itself. Just as, you know, sharing if you're in the market for one of these things and what you're going to use it for. Um, I've got a winch and some hand guards that I just haven't seemed to have found the time to install yet. And the guys are letting the letting it fly out there bullet wise um but yeah so it's a 570 it is a bigger quad it's not um it's not like the smaller chassis or you know size i would say like some of the hondas you know like the honda 420s and those are a little bit smaller it's definitely a um definitely a bigger machine it's, it's the same size as you know i've had like a i had a brute force 750 in the past um, I would say this is right on par size wise with it. You can see it's got the independent, independent rear end. It's just factory exhaust. The whole thing's factory other than these, these tires and wheels. Um, <clears throat> some Colfin, Colpin bags on there or whatever. Just, you know, I hunt with it and cruise around out here in the mountains. It's always just good to get out and go exploring a little bit. That's what I'm doing today. Um, but yeah, so it's a 570, um, you know, capability wise, there's nothing that I have encountered hill wise, climb wise, any sort of terrain or anything like that, that this thing can't do, um, that I would say any of the big bore quads would do. Um, I think this 570, it's like 43 or 44 horsepower. Don't quote me on that, but it's right in that range. And I think the last 750 I had... The, that Kawasaki Brute Force, which was a V-twin, and it, it had some balls. I mean, it, it got up and went. Um, but I think that was like 50 horsepower, you know. So it's, you know, six horsepower is 10%, call it. But um, it's not anything that you're going to lose, like, capability of, you know. If you're a mud bog guy, you know, you guys out down south and on the, the southeastern, you know, the Georgia boys and all them that do the mud bog and stuff, Alabama and all that area – they want them big old, you know, 32 inch swamper tires and everything. And that's just not what we do. Not what I do. Um, so this is more than adequate. I would say the one downside of it, um, if I'm going to do a cons list, there's just a couple things that Polaris, you know, for, uh, these things are like nine grand. They're not cheap. They're also not the most expensive, but, um, there's just some cheapness to it. You know what I mean? For, for what you pay for, obviously the factory tires on these things are garbage if you've any any atv in my opinion um, usually the factory tires are the first thing to go they're crap these are night and day better handling wise stability wise just overall feel let me throw my stuff back here um this bothers me this front rack i like the rack itself but there's no you know the back has these little polaris mounting points these here right here where you could put the factory polaris stuff in well the front doesn't have them and that's where you want to put your gun when you're hunting but for what you pay for i mean there's some storage up here you know um, batteries up here it's nice and accessible but look at this just all plastic crap plastic hinge you know like this thing is just, it seems like for what you pay for these things, they could give you a little better, uh, a little better quality. Like, I don't know. It's, is what it is. It's closed, you know, 
just there's little stuff like that you know polaris shifters and stuff like that are very cheap and chinzy but um kind of nice they thought this out they gave you radiator access so if you are clogged with mud you can get to that pretty easily um the winch i bought is a is a factory winch that'll bolt right in that cradle there it's a worn um i'll do a video on it but headlights aren't leds you'd think nowadays everything would be led but they're not um you can see that plug right there a little white plug um that's uh part of the controls for the winch it'll go to it and then they do give you a little factory plug in here for your in out um, on your winch control that'll go right here so um what i really love about this quad is how comfortable it was i was dead set i thought i was going to buy a can-am i was looking at a can-am it was either a 550 or a 600 i can't remember but um i was dead set on the can-am and then i wound up going over to the polaris dealer and just just sitting on one of these and literally just me sitting on it is what drove my decision to get this polaris over a can-am the ergonomics of it where the bars are the seat this seat is absolutely the most comfortable atv seat i've ever been on and i've had i don't know five six of these things over the years um night and day over the can-am uh, way better gas tank here now one thing that is nice they give you a 12 volt um this is what i was getting at has a built-in trickle charger so your normal little battery tender just plugs right in there which is nice you know if you're like me and this thing might sit for two three months at a time you know and then you go and use it a bunch and you want your battery to be fresh so um you know it's real simple it's it uses the polaris razor the same dash and everything i'll start it up um, essentially starts with just a turn of this key right here um but yeah so you see it's in two by four mode engine mode has 11 hours on the engine 122 miles so it's still brand new it is broken in you know, but um, they're fairly quiet for what it is and then real simple to actuate four by four it's just as simple as push that button to the left is two by four to the right it goes to all-wheel drive and it's either on or off you just kill it that goes to two by four pull it again goes to all-wheel drive um, you know pretty much this thing goes everywhere in two-wheel drive that i want it to um, i've been impressed with the efficiency my first hunting trip this last year when i brand new i had had it for like two days Here's a sound again. fairly quiet for a 570 cc machine machine it is a single cylinder um but yeah the the efficiency so i did that first day hunting i did like 60 plus miles and you know i'm doing fairly slow speeds i'd say on average 10 to 15 miles an hour up and down trails and climbing and stuff like that and it didn't even use a half a tank so it's like a five point something gallon tank jesus getting windy um it's like a five point something gallon tank but uh yeah it's all in all, super happy with it. I knew what I was getting. I knew I wasn't getting the most powerful quad that's out there. So if you get in a 570 and you're expecting it to be a rocket or a speed demon, you know, don't expect that. It definitely goes and it definitely will hold its own. I'd say if it struggles anywhere, it's on the bottom end. Top end is not a problem. It's, it's just low end torque and things like that, but completely adequate for what I want it to do. Um, and I'm, I've been real happy with it. I'm real impressed with it. Um, you know, Polaris been around a long time. It should be very serviceable for years and years to come. So uh, that's my two cents. A couple of uh, cons, a couple things I didn't touch on too. Sorry, I jump around. But the this is the first um, power steering quad I've ever had. Um, super nice at low speeds. It's great. It's, it is way easier. You know, if you've ever ridden for four or five hours on quad, you know it does tire, tire you out. Um, 
I wish it was progressive though. I wish that I wish the faster you went, the less steering assistance it gave you. It's it's just on all the time. And when you're doing 25, 30 miles an hour on fairly hard packed stuff down the trail, it's so light. Like I could steer this thing with a finger, which sounds great, but you're fairly disconnected. It's like you're floating. Like you could be on the bars and be moving like this and not even feel them. And they just, you know, it kind of does its own thing. So I wish it, I wish the assistance was less the, the, the more speed you picked up kind of like adaptive power steering on a vehicle where at slow speeds, it's the most assistance and at higher speeds, it backs off and gives you a little bit more weight in the wheel or the bars. Um, that would be ideal, but that's really the biggest knock on it, you know, is that, um, and then just some of the cheap flimsiness to it. But, um, overall it's, it's really well-built machine. So, um, if you're looking at a Polaris Sportsman, you know, they aren't cheap. They're a little pricey. Um, probably more power, a little bigger, a little more capable than like a Honda 420 or something like that. I'd put them on par with like a Rubicon 500 Honda. Um, you know, I think the Grizzly or I think Grizzly or Kodiak, they make a 450 that are a little bit smaller. Um, but for a full size quad, the 570 is definitely plenty of power. It'll go anywhere you need it to go. As long as you're not a mud bogger guy or anything like that. If you're just trail riding and, you know, stuff like this, you'll be just fine. So I know that's a little long and I jumped around a bit, but um, I don't know. Just wanted to put a thing out there. Hopefully it helps somebody.